Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we bless you. We've come to seek your face this morning. Can you begin to pray this morning as we commit the service to God this morning? We want your presence, Father. We have come to seek your face, Holy Spirit. We have not come to hear from man, but we have come to hear from you, Father. What are you saying, Father? What are you saying? What are you saying, Father? Father, what are you saying? Can we begin to pray this morning as we commit the service to Father? Lebrados ke ne bredes ke le braka na 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 shen dere bados ka ne braka tosh ke ne bredes ke le bados mani brados ke le ba shen dere bados ka le braka na 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 shen dere bados ka le ba oh mani bredes ke le bados mene brados are you praying this morning le braka tosh ke le ba je brados ke le ba shen dere bados ka we are asking for an encounter with the glory of God. We have come to seek your face, Father. Father, what are you saying? What are you saying, Father? What are you saying, Father? Father, can you open your mouth to your father this morning can you open your mouth to your father this morning as you honor your father as you exalt your father
Oh, Father, we bless you. Lord, we honor you this morning. Thank you because you are king and you are God. Thank you because you are the ancient of days. Thank you because you are the finisher of our days. You are the one that is perfect and righteous. You are the king of glory. There is none beside you. We honor you this morning through our worship, through the word, through everything. We ask, oh Lord, that you come and take absolute control this morning. You are highly exalted forever and ever. Highly exalted more than anything, any challenge, whatever it is. Father, we bless you. For in Jesus' name we pray.
voices and declare that our God is God. And he deserves all the worship. He is Lord. He is God of himself. He's the one who comes to me. He's the one who comes to He's the one who comes to battle. He's the audience of one. The one that comes to worship. We declare that our God is God. He's God all by himself.
the mountains still praise you, Jesus. We will. In the ocean still rose your greatness. We will praise you. No stone we cry out in my place. No stone we will worship.
just to worship our Father, to bow before His throne and give Him all the glory, all the praise that He deserves. Oh, this 2020 has been the year, but the Lord has kept us through it. A thousand has fallen, but I write ten thousand for the left. But it's only the grace and the mercy of the Lord that we are standing. So who are we, oh God, that you are mindful of? Who are we that you love us so much, oh God? We are not better than those in the grave. Oh, but we are here to say, we worship you, oh God. We live to worship you. That is what our life is all about. We live to worship you. 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 We live to worship you, oh God. At your mercy, oh Lord, I need to worship you, oh Lord, oh Lord, yes, I need to of God is so mighty in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Please just turn to your left and your right. Say good morning to someone in church this morning. I know the presence of the Lord is so strong and mighty. Oh, tell your brother, your sister, it's good to be in the house of my father. Hallelujah. We'll take the video announcements. Praise the Lord. joining our service today. This is the Potter's House of Lagos, an army on a mission to raise exemplary leaders to influence society through Jesus Christ, our foundation. If this is your first time here, be assured that you're in the right place. It's our hope that you get an unforgettable experience of God in this service. We also love to get to know you better. So please, we ask that you spare a few moments after this service to join a new guest reception. Welcome to the family. Hey family, let's give a warm welcome to Pastor Orono and Pastor Loveth. We are so glad to have you join us today. Welcome home. Now, TPHOL is a dynamic church. That's why in response to the current realities of our world, we have evolved our means and methods to ensure that we continue to reach as many as possible with the message of the kingdom. While our fiscal services still hold at 8.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. on Sundays, our e-church community can look forward to their special online service at 7 a.m. and 12 noon on Sundays via our YouTube channel. For those of us with kids, our junior church services hold online. Please encourage the younger kids to join the junior church service at 9.30 a.m. on our YouTube channel. Our double digits class holds at 4 p.m. via Zoom. This is a special call for volunteers to join our media and e-church teams. First, if you're great at voiceovers, or perhaps you're an aspiring or professional presenter, we would love to have you on board. Also, if you're skilled or just interested in script writing, audio or video editing, graphic design, or videography, why not join us? Just reach out to us via the number on screen. Here's some crucial information for everyone. From this Tuesday, the 17th of November, 
we will be taking a short break from our weekly corporate prayer meetings. We encourage you to stay expectant as we will announce a date of resumption soon. Remember that we are a family that cares about you. So if you or anyone you know needs counseling or prayer, please feel free to reach out to us via the numbers now on screen. Those are the announcements we have this morning. But just before we go, we want to once again give a warm welcome to Pastor Orono, who is bringing us a word today on the call to service. Thanks everyone for watching our announcements and bye for now. Powerful and equipped beyond measure, ready to do battle. We are concurrent. Ladies, get ready for a fresh move of the spirit as we meet again this November for the Get So Many Women's Mini Vigil with Pastor Loveth. God is releasing a concurrent spirit on us. We are stepping out of fear, customs, and destroying generational strongholds. Join us on Friday, 27th of November, 2020 at 9.30 p.m. to 12 midnight. Theme is the Daughters of Zelophehad, activating the conquer spirit. Ladies, you cannot afford to miss this. Tune in via Zoom, YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram. To RSVP, please call 0903-660-7212. Ladies, it's your time to arrive.
from something great. in the house. Come on. Give him a price in the house, somebody. Give him praise in the house, somebody. Yeah. If you believe the Lord is mighty, give him praise in the house. Yeah. If you believe that the mighty God is your God, give him praise in the house. Listen, the people of the back. restrict your praise. Sometimes you need to step out of that space and express your praise. Tell someone to say, step out of that space. No, no, look at the person and say, is it your shoe? Look at the person and say, is it your shoe? <laughs> Come on, it's allowed. You can remove the shoe for one minute. You need to step out of the space and give him a praise. I'm going to bring up a wonderful man of God, but before I bring him up, listen, listen, before I bring him up, I want you to, you know, you know, listen, if God has delivered you, there's some praise you praise. Some people by your side will say, it's crazy praise. But Miss Mezzi, they will not understand where you are coming from. Because if they understand where you are coming from, they will do your praise. Look at somebody say, can you do my praise? Oh, I said, look at somebody say, can you do my praise? Tell somebody say, can you do my praise? So I'm going to give you one minute. Ooh. 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 Ooh.
It's only me that came to church this morning. Don't let your space determine your praise. Run about. Jump up if you have to jump up. Step up if you want to step up. But give him praise. Give him praise. Saga da gada barasha. Zika teleka tena barash. It's getting better. I say it's getting better. I say it's getting better. I say it's getting better. been true for some people coming for the very first time this is normal to us so you might come next you may think will be normal next week this is normal <laughs> you might say no no not this service for me next week you will meet us here oh I'm so excited pastor is in the house come on give a break wonderful pastor, a boss, a pastor, a father to everyone here and sometimes when you have the privilege to be given an opportunity to serve, please take it with all your heart because you don't know where you will arrive. Take it with all your heart. So I celebrate a wonderful man brought into my own life, positioned me for what is happening. So I'll give praise to God and I want you to celebrate God for this man of God. Lift up your hand and bless the Lord. celebrate someone that's also dear to me. She's so dear to me. So a lot of people will not know, all right? A lot of people will not know, but I celebrate her every time I have the opportunity to. So with Jesus' joy, celebrate. Champion! Pastor! Love it. Put your hands together. Give it Hallelujah. Come on, give yourself a hand. <laughs> you know, Pastor Manuel, you're, you're, you are so in the spirit. That in fact, there is a dance, you know, in, in Psalm 126, 1 and 2. It said that <laughs> it was like a dream. I said, do we have that? Yeah. Let, let me show you a dance. So I just want you to prepare yourself because... See, you're not going to wait for music before you start dancing. 
music will meet you where you are dancing. I, I want to show you a dance. That's the kind of celebration we are getting into. You see? Now, uh, and nothing determines that. Only you determines it. Because God has resolved it already. Okay. Let, let me show you a dance. Do it. All right, well, there are... Are we good? Okay. Let me show you just a few seconds. Sound, please. Pastor Fisha sent me this. Anyone ready to dance? Yeah. Let me explain to you why you should dance today. Well, but before I do that, let me just observe some protocols. I'm glad to be back home. <laughs> you know, I was um, saying that, can you imagine, I haven't been to the Porter's House service in church since March 2020. It's unbelievable. If anyone said this, you would think it was a joke, but that's the truth. And, um, and that's the message I brought to the house today. I want to say thank you to the leaders. Thank you. You know, sitting here or standing here, um, I'm a very, very proud man. When a father can go away and leave the children to sort out everything, he's a fulfilled man. I don't have to prove anything anymore. Oh, yes. So I, I'm a very proud man. Um, you know, I now I understand what the father said when Jesus came out of the Jordan. He says, my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Please put your hands together for Pastor Emmanuel. And, you know. Yeah. Where, when you are, uh, I tell my drivers, I said I have over 45 years driving experience. And so when you are driving me, you must be a good driver. So one driver was driving me sometime. After two days, I started driving him. I'll be driving, he will sit in front. And then the one that annoyed me one day, we were coming to church. Then he was sleeping. I, I was him one. I said, ah, can, can I sleep when you are driving? I can't even sit down. Not the talk of sleep. You, you are sleeping and I'm driving. You know. But with Pastor Emmanuel, I can't sleep. <laughs> I, you know, and I also want to say, our dear pastor, Angela Uzubo. <laughs> you know, you know, all of uh, Pastor Manuel's house are, uh, in fact, David. Every, I will hear from him from morning till maybe around 11.45. I'll just hear good night, sir. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, Pastor Manuel, Pastor Angela, wonderful family, um, giving us some powerful children. And they're all my friends, so I will always celebrate them. And um, all the leaders in the house, thank you very much. The amazing Porter's Wheel, any day. And you know, um, I especially want to celebrate Auntie Obi today. It was her 60th birthday a few days ago. 60 and going strong. strong and powerful you know I celebrate her not only because she turned 60 but because she's a pillar you know she has stood with us all through thick and thin she's always been around and you always find her beside me so I'm so grateful to God Pastor Manuel I mean uh, you know these are the confidence I have you have support with Antiobi heaven and earth can pass away you have support <laughs> and you know I was just thinking about it. Wonderful staff I've had over the years also doing this work. You really don't see them. Do you know of the four longest serving um, staff of the House of Freedom, three of them are here? Wow. 
Yes. So there's Silva, there's Nkechi, and there's Ehi. <laughs> It's only the lady that has 001 that is at the dome. But uh, uh, Silva, Kechi, and Ehi, they are the top four longest serving staff in the House of Freedom. Please, let's give them a hand. One. You know, so, so, so they are such strong people, except the day they plan for you. Kechi plans for you, or Ehi. <laughs> they've planned for you, have you? <laughs> what a great people. I mean, um, I, I couldn't have, um, couldn't have, when, when we were working away, I was thinking at some point, should I move them with me to my new office? But then they are like, you know what you call an encyclopedia? They have the repertoire. You can, they are institution by themselves. So, and we need them for this work. Please, once again, help me put together your hands for my wonderful GM and the managers. Thank you. So, I bring you greetings from the House of Freedom. Now, what you do, what you do in a season like this is what I've come to share with you. That's why I said, that's the dance. Um, and I'll give you, look at the hall. This is a beautiful hall, right? That's what you do with a season like this. They locked us down, and then we expanded the hall. Oh, you didn't get it. No, you didn't get it. You know, when you guys came back after the lockdown, were you not shocked at what you saw? I said, that's what you do with a season like this. You don't survive a season like this and say, ah, I survived, though. I passed the lockdown, no. I passed the protest, though. So, so, no. When you come out, you show yourself a living God. When they see you, they say, how can this be? Then you say, my God, is that one they're talking about? He's a mighty one. He's the ancient of days. You see, he's not like man. He, he uses cloud, light, everything as a garment. The Bible says a fire goes before him. You know, we can have all kinds of convoys, but for him, it's a fire that goes before Amazing. Amazing. He puts on light like a garment. That's his clothing. Awesome. That's the God we're talking about. So don't expect things not to be different when you know that God. So they shut us down. It was an opportunity for us to expand the hall. That's what you do with a season like this. I'll, I'll give you a few scriptures and then I'll run through the message. Now, I'll give you the warning first. You know, in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 11, all right, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 11, uh, let's read fast. Who's reading for me this morning? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. And I'll read the read Passion Translation. Yes. Should That's I? it. I thought, yeah, please, okay. who's reading? All the tests they endured on their way through the wilderness. So, they're talking about all the things you will see in the Bible. It says, all the tests, everything they pass through. Yes, man, go on. On their way through the wilderness are a symbolic picture, an example that provides us with warning. Provides so that, us with warning so that... So that we can learn through what they experience. Yeah. For we live in a time when the purposes of all, when the purpose of all the ages past is mm -hmm. now completing its goals within us. Absolutely. Thank so, you. So, okay. It's fine. Just verse 11. So that what you see in the Bible is a warning for every one of us. The other day, I think I was taking a, uh, one of the meetings of our leaders. And I said, you know, one of our favorite books, Dr. Clark, good to see you. <laughs> One of our favorite books in the Bible or chapters is uh, Hebrews chapter 11. And I asked, I said, who do you know there in Hebrews 11? Who, who touches you? And people were talking about Abraham, Enoch, Sarah. You know, they mentioned all the powerful names. The Bible talked about those of them who, they, the Bible said they quenched the violence of fire. They talked about Samson. They talked about Jephthah. They talked about Barak. They talked... David, they mentioned the prophets and all of them, you know, everyone was excited. So if you read 
Hebrews 11 is called the Hall of Fame. You will see all of that. Meanwhile, it has only the Old Testament greats. It doesn't have Paul. It doesn't have Andrew. It doesn't have Peter. It doesn't have Stephen. So you can imagine if they add those ones. In fact, he said that time will fail to mention so many other names. But the weight of it is when you flip to chapter 12 and in verse 1. He said, seeing that we are what? Surrounded with such cloud of witness. And I asked, who is this cloud of witness? Guess what? Those guys we just talked about. So your Christianity, my Christianity is going to be measured with one man who said, let everything pass away. I will still rejoice. Habakkuk. Your Christianity and my Christianity will be measured against someone who looked at life passing him by. Got a promise from God. 25 years later, he was 75 when he got a promise. He still held on to faith. Abraham, we're going to stand side by side. So these are the cloud of witness. In court, you know how they bring witness. So Abraham will come and stand. He said, um, I didn't have a son for 25 years. How old were you when you received the promise? He said, 75. What was the promise to buy a car? He said, no, to have a son. And you stood at 75. You didn't bind the man who brought that message at 75. He says, the wife didn't consider the deadness of her body. I don't know what deadness you are considering right now. And I always say, let's not bring God to our level. God is not man. That it is impossible for man doesn't mean it is impossible for God. He can do anything. That's why he is God. He is sovereign. And I, I said something. All right, please help us also read um, Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2. The same Passion Translation. God conceals the revelation of his word in the hiding place of his glory. No, this, please start again. God does what? God conceals the revelation of his word hmm. in the hiding place of, of his, his glory. glory. Yes, ma'am. But the honor of kings is revealed by how they thoroughly search out the deeper meaning Thank you. of all that God says. That's what kings do. Any king in this house today. You know what they do? They search out. Kings don't just look for fallow things. They go deep. Revelation. And God does not do anything but he builds on revelation. In, um, in Matthew chapter 16, if you read verse 13 to 19, remember that story. Jesus was asking them, who do men say that I am? And then they were saying... And then Peter said, you are the Christ. He said, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. You have received divine revelation. Then he said, it is upon this revelation that I will build my church. And because I'm building my church upon revelation, the gate of hell will not prevail. He said, because of where I am building my church. So that revelation is a solid foundation. That's where he built his church. And that's how God operates. He only works by revelation. If you can't catch it, if you have no revelation, if you have not seen it, he doesn't take you there. You never get to where you have not seen in the spirit. He won't take you there. He won't take you there because you will be confused. And he doesn't want you confused. That's the God we serve. You know, in, in Jeremiah 1 verse 11 to 12, he asked Jeremiah, what do you see? Then Jeremiah said, hmm. I see the branch of an almond tree, which you see the, the, the almond tree is what tells them that, aha, spring has come. It begins to bud. He said, I see the branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said, you have done well. Guess what I will do? I will bring it to pass. If you don't see it, he doesn't have anything to bring to pass. So you must see. That's why I gave you all of these scriptures. First of all, I gave you a warning. And I told you what kings do. They set out the world by his revelation because he only builds on revelation. So this morning, I have a simple message for you. Just in one short verse of Joshua chapter 3 verse 15, just the top line. The title of this message is called The Flood and the Harvest. The Flood and the Harvest. I've just used the introduction to tell you how God operates. That God is not man. He doesn't walk the way you walk. He doesn't look at things the way you look at. 
you know, that, that there was something I wrote down here. I said, the things of God are of, are of great and common concern. God requires no more from us than the right use of the faculties he has given us. And that we are ignorant because we choose not to learn. That's the only reason we're ignorant, because we don't want to learn. If you want to learn, some people have phones, very powerful phones. All they do with it is, hello, yes, and then they, maybe they can send text message. Meanwhile, your phone can take you anywhere you want to go. Some people still ask, eh, where is... Meanwhile, in your phone, it can tell you, after 200 meters, turn left. It's only in America the thing will confuse you because it will be telling you block after two blocks. And in your mind, you think two blocks are just two buildings. Two blocks, you will be going and going and going. But whatever it is, your phone is that powerful. If you are too lazy to understand how your phone operates, it's useless. You, can, you will have spent 100, 200, 300, even if it's 10,000 you spent on the phone. It has functions that you need to learn to use. Some people will say, oh, I can't learn again. Who stopped you from learning? You did. Okay, Joshua chapter 3, verse 15, NIV. Joshua chapter 3, verse 15, NIV, please. Now the Jordan is at flood stage. Stop. Now what? The Jordan. Everyone, please tell me, what stage what stage? You guys know what flood is, right? You've seen flood before? When you're driving or when you're dreaming that you are having a cool bath in the swimming pool, not knowing that your house is flooded. You know those kind of flood? Can we see some? Yes. So this is, this is what they call flooding. Give us some more pictures. No, floods, floods. Just the floods first. Yes. Can you imagine? So, Yeah. Give us more pictures. This is flawed. So when you think of a flood, what do you think about? An uncomfortable situation. Life-threatening. Floods kill people. Flood carry cars. They submerge. They destroy your whole property. <laughs> I used to, I remember when we were living in Sule in the 90s. As upstairs, the people downstairs, you know those solar houses that they are lower than the windows of the ground floor are on the same level as the outside floor. You know those? Uh -huh. they, there's no rainy season. Let it not be that I'm wicked. So I'll just be here. They have started building water from their house. So I'll have to come down to help every rainy season. Maybe sometimes can be three times, sometimes four times. That's what flood does. Flood is not a nice place, right? So we all have an understanding of what flood is. But, so he says the Jordan is always at flood stage. Do you know when? When, ma'am? Read on. All during harvest. <sighs> All during So that he says that whenever you see flood, what should you do? So why, what does the flood announce? Does it make sense? But that's God. His ways are far different from our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He says, when, the, when you see the flood, now there, there are two ways to deal with it. Some of us will see the flood and say, ah, and we can die with the flood. But if you see from God's perspective, the flood is announcing what? Oh, you didn't. I, I, maybe you don't like the word harvest. You want to see what a harvest is like? Give us some pictures of harvest, please. Harvest is bloom. Life is good. You have everything. All you have worked for, you can now reap. That's your harvest. Oh, my goodness. That's your harvest. Anyone interested in a harvest here? Then show me. Now, if the flood announces the harvest, what season are you in right now? Exactly. Having gone through this year like this what else is remaining ah uh ah -uh, you got it COVID did his own I was telling them in the first service I, I, I told them the story of a lady who been 
trying to leave the job or the bank. She got to a very good position in the bank, um, carried all her money, wasn't enough, took further loans, and was looking for a shop. Finally got somewhere in one nice mall, paid in dollars, moved in from, uh, finally moved in, paid sometime in, in December last year. Then by the time they did all the finishing, moved in uh, at the beginning of March. Three months gone for her rent already. So she's already complaining, you know, because the loans are running. She has no money. She's just struggling. She was selling jewelry, diamonds, gold, all of these things, and moved into her shop. Before the end of March, what happened? Remember? Yeah. So there was a lockdown. Can you imagine? She said, ah, if only God had told her not to pay yet. The months kept counting. The interest kept going. The months kept counting. And then after the lockdown, who wants to wear gold? Who buys gold? Nobody bought anything. Even the clothes you bought, did you wear them? To wear. You bought shoes. You're just looking at them gathering dust. That was what the season brought. What a season called COVID. What a year called 2020. When I saw the photographer snapping us, I said, how can he know the difference? All of us are with masks. We all look alike. How can you tell this is Pastor Philip, this is Pastor Robert? Everyone is masked up. But that's the year we have found ourselves. But as Christians, let me finish the story of the lady. And so, every day she goes to her shop hoping that one day at least one person will come. She was ready to sell anything at any price just to hold some money. And then this last riot raided her, cleared everything, burnt their mall. <laughs> what do you say? You know that uh, uh, this flood you have tried. Now, the flood can never take you. Because all it does is it's announcing something in the spirit. And you need to tap into it. Oh, I love one of our sisters so much. She also lost some things, but she started gathering people and she was encouraging them. People even thought they didn't know she lost anything. She was encouraging them. She was encouraging them. You know, what do you do? What is your perspective? Now, if your perspective is a flood, then you will look and say, ah, I am dead. But if you have understanding, that's why I told you, first of all, who God is. God is not man. And he's not a wicked God. No. No. He's a good father. You know that. You can tell from times past how God has saved you. And so if he allowed this, he wants you to get the, the right perspective of it. If you saw only flawed and nothing else, you've, you've lost it. But if you understand this concept, then you can now say, aha, the flood has come. What does the flood announce? Harvest. If you look at the book of Job, Job is one man for over 30 chapters. They were compl Job was complaining. The flood hit him. But in chapter 42, the Bible used only one chapter to talk about his restoration. And then he said that his restoration was how many times much more than what he lost. That's a harvest. That's what the flood does. It only announces the harvest. The flood cannot kill you. The flood cannot put you down. I say it's a season for harvest. See, in, um, in Matthew 21, verse 19, Jesus went to a fig tree. Listen, no. I, I, let, let's just see that scripture so that we're able to, you can understand what I'm talking about. Matthew 21, verse 19. Matthew 21, verse 19. I want to show you something from that scripture. Matthew 21, verse 19. All right. So, okay, you can't see that, but it says sin. Now, let's all read. One, two, go. Mm-hmm. That's what happens when the season does not respond. But the season is meant to respond. I mix up my... my there, there is one that says it wasn't a season for figs. Can you help me find that? It's the same story, 
But he said, Jesus went to the fig tree when it was not a season for? When it was not a season for? In the natural, so it seemed. That is not a season for figs. But who sets times and seasons? Is it nature? Uh -uh. Who does? That's what Daniel said, Daniel 2.21. He said he sets times and seasons. If God says it is harvest, whether you see flood, what you should you do? You rejoice. You rejoice. That was what Habakkuk was doing in chapter 3. In chapter 1, Habakkuk was complaining. He was saying, how long can this thing be? Lord, who can go through this kind of thing? What kind of a God are you that you are lying this? But in chapter 3, something changed in him. He says, the flood announces the harvest. Then he said something. He said, let all the investment go away. Let everything pack up. I will yet praise the Lord. I will yet praise the Lord. You know, it is the Lord that changes times and seasons. Nobody else. Only God. That's why Jesus went to a fig tree when it was not the time for figs. If the Lord is telling you start something new now that he will bless. Because you see, God does not bless nothing. There must be something. God doesn't work with nothing. You must offer him something. Men over time, faith tells us that we must make a move. Men over time, this is what they've gone through. So you have someone like Joseph. You remember Joseph? Did you see his life? But he knew that all those flood was going to take him to the harvest. Everyone. So I'm just telling you what the Bible has said so that you can know this God that we serve. So if you have come through 2020 up to this point, then all that remains is what? But you see, if you see only the calamities of this year, and that's all you can identify this year with, you will miss the harvest. Let me tell you why. I was telling them earlier in the service, I said, yeah, last night um, at about 11.45, or 11, no, about 11.15, I have a friend in, um, in Singapore, so I had asked um, about something, I'd made some requests earlier. And then when he was replying me, guess what? He said, good morning. Oh, no, sorry. He said, good evening. Meanwhile, they are seven hours ahead of us in time. But because he knows I am in here in Lagos, he said, good evening. And then when I replied him, I said, good morning. One hour later, when he sent another message back, you know how he greeted? What did he greet? But the weather had not changed. It was still dark. When my calendar changes, it is not done. It is not daylight that changes my calendar. It is not the sun that announces a new day for me. Once the day crosses to 12, it's a new day for me. Everywhere will still be dark. If you are waiting for dawn to announce your day, you've lost six hours at the minimum. If you're waiting for music to dance that dance, you've lost time. That's the point I'm trying to make. That's the point I'm trying to make. I didn't come here to preach today. I mean, I've not been here in how many months? Seven months. So if I'm going to come here today, the Lord needs to give me a word for his people. I didn't come to visit. I came to announce a change of season. When these things begin to happen, you must understand the times. It was the persecution of the early church that caused the galvanization of the spread of the gospel. They said, let's go kill them. And so they ran away from Jerusalem. And anywhere they went, guess what happened? They took the gospel with them. They expanded the gospel. What the enemy thought was for evil became for their good. You know, it was to persecute that Saul was going in, in Acts chapter 9 on the way to Damascus when he met with the Lord. And we all know what Paul did for the Lord. It looked like evil is coming, but it was good that came out of it. That's what God does. He turns things around. What they thought was for evil, he will turn it around for good. What they thought was lockdown. They said, let's lock down. Nobody should go to church. Guess what we did with it? We expanded this place. 
We perfected it inside and outside. We said, thank you. <laughs> they thought they are frustrating us, right? We said, thank you. You know, one of the things this lockdown did for us as a church, I said it earlier also. You see, they get so many women. It started here. Pastor Lovett and Chobi, a few women, they gathered in a few front row seats. Then they started meeting. From then on, one day, we found that they were bigger than the church. They are an interdenominational ministry. You had me members from all the churches. And this hall, in fact, it wasn't this big then, became too small for them. Then they started using stadium. As if that was not enough. They were supposed to have a program, I think it was April or May this year. Yeah, May. So they locked down. They can't have stadium. They, they kept, in fact, I remember Pastor Angela kept shifting the dates with stadium. She kept meeting stadium people, shifting dates. And then at some point, guess what they did? Someone called and said, but can't we be praying? They said, hmm, okay, that's not a bad idea. Then the ladies started meeting to pray. They started meeting to pray on Zoom. They started meeting to pray on Zoom. Then in July, two weeks to the program, Pastor Tony called Pastor Lovett and said, I've seen this thing. It's a global ministry. We thought it was a joke. We said, okay, can we wait for the August one? He said, ah, no, 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 no. Today, get so many in five continents. That's what you do with a season like this. What they thought was for evil. When the flood came and shut down the program for stadium, guess what came out of it? Now we're even having translation in French. One of the things coming out. You know, I, I was listening, and in fact, we were, we were blown apart. They have ambassadors in South Africa. They have in Asia. They have in the U.S. They have in the U.K., Sweden, everywhere, members of Gethsemane. The stadium cannot contain how many people they receive these days. That's how massive. They have another program coming on the 27th. A few, two Fridays from now, already, all over, it's trending. The women are armored to take on the world. From everywhere, that's what you do with a season like this. The flood, what did they bring? The harvest. And talking about that, that's what the potter's house is about. The potter's house, it's not so much of a very old church, four or five years now. Sometimes when I tell people, they say, oh, just, yes, yeah. But potter's house came to be because of a situation. We were running God Bless Nigeria Church. And then at some point, it was very difficult funding the, the, the project. Very few people were supporting the project at that time. You know, people get tired after some time. So it was only the people who understood the vision, Pastor, you know. And when we saw we're struggling, so I had a meeting with Pastor Tony. I said, it would be nice to get one of our arms. Let's get regular people like every one of you here, and then we can support the work of the God Bless Nigeria Church. And he said, okay. So we started, in fact, initially it was God Bless Nigeria Church that was meeting here. Then they said, no, let's keep the brand. God Bless Nigeria is for the underprivileged. It's for the area boys. We are reforming them. It's a reformation work. It's for the prostitutes. We are changing their lives, turning them around, making them ministers of God. So let's keep the brand and let's know that God Bless Nigeria, that's it. And that's how the name Potter's House came. And so Potter's House is meant to be uh, what I call, I'm trying to look for the word, a tool in the hands of God. That's why I wasn't too pleased with the riots, the looting, the arson, because I felt we didn't do as much as we should have done. Guess what we could have done? So our boys at God Bless Nigeria, they should have protected various areas, you know, so that when people are coming from Orile to attack Bode Thomas, we also have our Orile boys who will stop them. Because I saw it happen on our end. Um, after the, uh, uh, what's it called? There, there's a shop right at uh, Jakunde. So that place was looted, that whole area. But they didn't go beyond a certain place because the Omonilas in that area, they protected their area. You know? So the area boys. Because I asked them, I said, why didn't you guys go further? They said, well, because of the road. They said, Pastor, this is our boundary. And they stayed there. All the supermarkets on their side, safe. So imagine we're able to put God bless Nigeria, in, and that's what we must do. In fact, that's part of the reason I think God has also promoted me. So that we're now working with politicians and government. We cannot just leave these things to them. They don't understand. But when we raise men in different areas, 
Because you cannot imagine what the next one would be like if this last one was like this, if we don't intervene now. And the Potter's House of Lagos is not only located here just for show, it's so that we take a place in the spirit. We know that Lagos is ours. And we make, take a stand. We say, never again will such a thing happen in Lagos. Did you see the streets? Did you see Bode Thomas? Did you see Aden Rogun Sawyer? My goodness. Never again, not on our watch. We're going to take our stand. That's what the Potter's House is about. Ministries are going to be bettered from this place. Then you will say, ah, had they known, they would not have tried this thing. I was telling Pastor Cheson the other day. So I've seen the businessmen come in. He needs to nurture them. Pastor Emmanuel has a ministry called Men Mature. Pastor, we need to take Men Mature far, wide now, you know, bigger, much more international than where we are right now. We're going to move it. And Tiobi gathers women. These women are strong women. So we are all going to be moving. So from different places, we're raising ministries. That's the potter's house. That's the potter's house. That's the potter's house. You know? So I want to also say thank you to the partners. Um, all of this was made possible by the funding that was coming from members of the Partners Club. Thank you very much. We well, appreciate your giving. We didn't have to borrow any money to be able to resolve this. You know, the partners had been able to meet up with their pledges um, up to the point, and so we're able to put this together. This is a beautiful piece. Is that not so? You want to give the Lord a hand. So I ask you a question, what will you do with this season? Because God has announced it, he has told you, but you have to do. Pain can be a trigger, it can be a motivating factor. Kenneth Hagin, one of, I mean, my, he, his books, I lived on his books as a young Christian. I have everything, he taught me so much from his books. Kenneth Hagin was on the hospital bed for how long? Then he said, no more. And then he, he ran one of the heaviest healing ministries, teaching healings and all of that. He had an understanding of the gifts of the spirit. That's what you do with a season like this. You turn this whole thing around. I don't know what you have lost. I don't know what you're doing with your tragedy. If you sit in one place and be crying, nothing will happen, no. Two people will tell you sorry. Then the third one will say, mm, is it only you? The first two will say, ah, sorry, oh. The second one will say, eh, Sorry. The third one will say, it's okay. Uh, uh, it's not only you. That's what they will do. So you need to, like in 1 Samuel chapter 30, take your time to read it. But in verse 6, David had come and he had lost everything. His family gone, everything he had gone. And then what did he do? The Bible said he encouraged himself in the Lord. You may be depressed right now. It's time for you to come out of it. David encouraged himself in the Lord. If you do not encourage yourself, you can't stand up. I don't know what tragedy has hit you, but I'm trying to tell you what children of God do with tragedies. They don't sit down and wallow in self-pity. Before Jesus Christ can meet some people, it will take 38 years. Remember that man? He was on that waiting. There's one song, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. While another as thou art calling, do not pass me by. Hey. That song is a wonderful song. But Jesus said that since the days of John the Baptist, up until now, he said the violent ones are doing what? Taking the kingdom. How? So there needs to be passion. If you wait, hmm, kill. If you take your boat, take your canoe, go into the sea, sit down there, wait. By the grace of God, maybe after 14 years, two fishes will jump in. You'll be a successful fisherman, right? But if you throw your net, that's what the Lord is waiting for. Are you ready to throw your net? I gave an example earlier. The two people that galvanized their whole situation, they woke up. Because you have to do something. Look at the miracles of Jesus Christ. The people made a demand on him. They just one or two people that he went to by themselves. They'll say, come on, come on. In fact, even his disciples, guess what? After he sent them and they were toiling and rowing, they were going to sing, guess what? He was walking past them. In Mark chapter 6, he says that, and he would have passed them by. And he was the one that sent them until they shouted. 
Save us. He will see you if you don't make a demand. So the demand you make is what you do. That's why I say, what are you going to do with this season? There was a woman in 2 Kings chapter 4. We all know her story very well. She went, she had two sons. Her husband was dead. And then she went to the prophet and said, see my situation. Her situation is terrible. Too much tragedies. Can you imagine a woman who's lost her husband? That's a terrible place to be. As if that's not bad enough. Her husband didn't leave anything for them because he was maybe a poor person. He didn't have money. So he was owing because he didn't have enough. He had gone to borrow to be able to maybe feed the same family or do something. Now he's dead. He didn't pay the debt. He didn't leave anything for the family. Look at all he, the condition he left for that woman. As if it's not bad enough again. Guess what? They say, ah, we want to seize these two sons now. Terrible situation one after the other. And then the woman went to the prophet. What do you have? The, the, man, the woman said nothing. He said, ah, you cannot have nothing. No, because nothing times one million is what? Yes. Zero times one billion is still zero. He says, where I am coming from, the resource available to you needs to touch something to be able to work out what we're looking for here. That's the activation. You need to do something. That's where faith comes in. You need to stand up. So in that first Samuel, I said, you must first of all come out of your distress by yourself. That's when you can pursue. Then when you pursue, you can overtake. When you overtake, you know what happens? You will recover. So it is what? Self-encouragement and then pursuit and then overtake and recover. If not, the third person will tell you, is it only you? Is it only you? That woman got to the prophet. The prophet said, you must have something, oh, because you must do something. We don't work on nothing. He said, um, I, I have one small cruise of oil. He said, now you are talking. Let's work a miracle. Please never stop believing in miracles. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said, never stop believing in miracles. Don't be deceived. Let them not tell you that, oh, never stop believing in miracles. Miracles happen. So that woman took that small oil. And then she went to borrow empty, empty containers. She found so much to borrow. I was telling her, I said, if it was me, after hearing this kind of story, I would just wait. Say, hey, I have this. Then they would say, ha, ah, Pio, good boy. See that your diesel. Go and be pouring it onto your food. You know, you know, my diesel is in a 50 liter keg, maybe only 10 liters. I will not look for a 50 liter keg. What did I say I will look for? Tanker, tanker. 55 liter, 45 liter tanker. I will just tell, Lavi, you stay, be pouring the oil. Me, I'll carry Philip with me. They will be lining the tanker. When we line tanker from my house till Niger State, one by one, filling tanker, I'm refinery now. It may take me two years. I don't know how long it took that woman when she was feeling those things. Her condition was getting worse, right? Ah, uh ah, -uh, no. Her calendar has changed. Her season had changed. Those people were threatening. She may even say, okay, hold one of the sons first, but she knows where she's going. We don't know how long it will have taken her to fill all the containers. But when she finished, the prophet said, go and sell. Pay your debt. And then do whatever you want with the profit. The season has changed. Tell yourself the season has changed. When you turn the situation around from being unemployed, I've seen so many people, they started a foundation based on a tragedy. You lost a son. Instead of wallowing there, what killed this boy? Pneumonia. Okay, we're so rich. Let's go and fund research into pneumonia to make sure nobody dies of my, uh, pneumonia anymore. Now you are talking. That's what they do with this season. What are you going to do with this season? What are you going to do with this season? You know how they do it? You have to be bold. This, the, the, the four lepers, you know where they went? The source of the problem itself. The four lepers, they heard the prophecy that by this time tomorrow, their condition is going to change. That it's not a season, but the prophet had spoken. 
Every other one said, even if you open the windows of heaven, nothing will happen. These four lepers, they said, you know what? Our situation is bad as it is. If we stay here, we die. There is famine in that other side. See where the Syrians are? That's where the thing is. But who was everyone afraid of? The Syrians. But that they obeyed God and started moving. It was that moving that changed things, that turned things in heaven. And then the Syrian army heard sounds. They said, ah, Israel has gone to gather people to kill us. They ran away. If you do not take a step, nothing happens. What are you going to do from this service? How are you going to turn the situation around? Jesus, in, in, in Malachi 3, 6, says, I am the Lord, I change not. Which means that every thought and every promise he has made towards us before the foundations of the earth, even before time began, must come to pass. Because he is God, and he cannot fail. He will never lie. The word of God is true, because God is true. The word of God is true, because God is true. God will never say anything that he cannot do. I said it earlier, I say, let's not measure God with ourselves. Because you cannot doesn't mean God cannot. Because you cannot forgive somebody doesn't mean God will not forgive you when you even kill his son. The person they were killing, he said, forgive them. That's how to show you how different. Because you are not a merciful person doesn't mean that God cannot show mercy. He cannot show up. He will show up. I want to close this service. By asking you one more time. What will you do with this season? We are waiting for the rain to fall. But guess what? The rain is waiting for you to bust it open. You're waiting for the rain to fall. The rain is waiting for you to bust it open. I said, you know, God is so different. Yesterday, Pastor Tony shared something with us. He said that Jesus called Judas in, in, in Matthew chapter 26. He called Judas friend. But in Matthew chapter 16, he called Peter Satan. Then he explained it. He said his purpose on earth was what he came to do. And one of that is he will die. When Peter heard that, he said, never. He said, ah, Satan, get thee behind me. Then Judas, he said Judas was pushing him towards his purpose. Judas is the flood. But what is Judas, that, that flood going to bring? The harvest. I don't know where you are at. I said I came to announce a season. So I want to pray with you. I'd like you to rise up. Can like Pastor Lovett to please join me. If God couldn't back up his words, he will never speak it. If he has sent me to bring this word, then he's brought a season. He's brought a season to turn around for someone. In Psalm 105, verse 37, you know what he said? He said, he brought them out with what? Silver and gold when they came out of bondage. But let me read one scripture for you. And that's what we pray with. In Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Please, can I have it on the screen? Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Please, can I have a mic for Pastor Lovett, please? Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Verse 2. Verse 2, please. All right. So all of these, I've made so much examples, but please read with me. What do you read? Oh, Lord. Uh-huh. Yes. 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 Verse 3. That will always be full of his praise. Oh, the people of God will praise the Lord. There's a turnaround. There's a change of season. Don't follow nature. Don't follow what the government is saying. Don't follow what the economies of the world are saying. 
I have a pyramid that I was sharing with um, some people on Thursday and you won't believe it. 90% of the world population is owned by less than 10% of the world population. So everybody is down there. That's not where you should stay. Habakkuk said, we've heard of your words in times past. Now perform this one that you have spoken. You want to lift up your hands. Speak unto him. You'll be like Habakkuk. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new season. What are you going to do with this season? It's what you do that matters. From here on, what are you going to do? Are you starting a new business? Starting something new? What are you doing? It's about you declaring what you see. It's about you declaring what you see. Yes. It's about you declaring what you see. Yes. It's what you see that the Lord will give to you. What are you seeing? Are you seeing a harvest? Can I hear you? Can the heaven hear you? are being prophetic we 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 are being prophetic rapa satari katoria hande malenga tosi paliene mega karu botoya hia rika tosia rika tosia rika tosia rika tosia rika tosia You are following a path and I see the path begin to clear for you. And you don't know what happened. But I saw like an earthquake just because for you to see that which the Lord has for you. I see light coming to someone. You have been confused for some time now. You have been confused for some time now. You have been worried. You have been depressed. The word today is for you. The word today is for you. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Let me tell you something. Ripa tanita tokiyate. Rika kariyama tosiataya. Rika koko kiyakato. Priyata tari pato, priyata tari pato, priyata tari pato, priyata tari pato. Sita tahana yama. You have no choice than to enter. Yes. That is the interpretation of what the Lord is saying. That's it. You have no choice than to enter. For you, you have reached the end. What is Pastor saying? He gave a word on Thursday about wealth. Someone just called him the next day and he said, Pastor, just, just like that, 680 enter his account. He said, he asked them how. They said something that was sitting there. That it belongs to you. Before, because he heard that word and he connected to that word, the heaven released it. That's it. Rima tanitari apotosia, pikato tari patoya, ikalupa tasi apatari apohon. Can somebody believe me today? That's what God is saying. You think the word make no sense? 3 a.m. The Lord wake me. He said there's going to be a harvest and there's going to be reproduction. Amen. I didn't know He was going to say it. Because I've been busy with this, I don't even know the topic. But when he was speaking, I was telling him, I said, throughout the night I was rolling, I said, harvest, reproduction. Father, you are speaking. 
Ikana tu tariata tosia Priyaka ta toriata ta temista tu Kia kuta kanepa toku ya katahana No one can stop my word Yes My word is yea and amen Yes There's something about a declaration There's something about you making something from the inside that the enemy cannot understand. And that is a language that the Lord has put in your mouth. And that is a language that confuses the devil. We rebuke you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Because the word has come and the word will perform. The Lord said, I will perform my word. For just five minutes, church. Send the whole place. Set an eruption in the whole place in the spirit. Because you are going to begin to speak mysteries. And that mysteries to begin to hear the interpretation. Can you just begin to speak? Begin to speak. Break something in the spirit. Break something in the spirit. Break something in the spirit. You are going to go beyond your boundary. The tongues you are going to speak is the tongue that you have not spoken before. Let the heaven. the dance was even before, you can dance before the music. When they ask you why are you dancing? They will ask you why are you dancing when there's no music. But you know why you are dancing. Yes. You know, I remember the testimony of a young boy who they were going to a crusade. They, 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 they play, they've not, there's been no rain for about five years. Mm -hmm. And then on the final day of the crusade, he took an umbrella. The mother said, why are you taking an umbrella? He said, ah, we've been praying for rain. Yes. The mother laughed. The rain that beat them Mahale that day, except the one that had an umbrella. I don't know what your expectation yes. is. The weather may not have changed, but it's a new day. We want to dance. We want to dance. Just one minute, we want to dance. Okay? Do, do, do you even know how to dance? Because I need to ask. What's the matter? Exactly. That's why I showed that dance. Or you can do better. When they ask you, what you why are you dancing? What will be your answer? Harvest. I used to love the way our mothers used to do Thanksgiving service. When they carry their plantain. Or they carry their yam. And then when they are dancing to the front to drop that bag of rice or that thing. 
I think that's how we should. Pastor, how do we do offering? Yeah, because of this. It's okay. Don't worry. We'll turn this around. You know, if I guess what's coming. After some time, we don't need cash anymore because it's too much for cash. It can only be by transfer. You didn't get that. It can only be by transfer. There are some things, this cash thing, mm, it can transfer. We want to dance, right? Are we ready? Okay. So I'm going to be watching from here. I have a responsibility to guide you into it. If I don't see you dancing, I'm coming to you. Okay. Oh, yeah, when you see me dance, I dance like a winner. No, 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 no. no. I, I don't like, you know, sorry, oh, you know, in Nigeria, there are different tribes. There's no way Yoruba music will not move you to dance. Can I have Yoruba music? <laughs> I want the one that tells us why we are dancing. You know, we're bringing him Thanksgiving. Okay. Like which one? Now you are talking. Shall we? by your side and you're dancing. Come on, Jesus is the bridegroom. So imagine Jesus dancing beside you and all of you are moving. Uh -huh. Some things happen in the house and some of us take it too lightly. Last week when we were having the social media day, you remember we said people should take selfie? How many of you remember? Do you remember? So there was this chap that was about to take selfie. So the other guy called him and said, come and take the selfie with me. And the guy said, ah, my phone is, my phone is not working. It's, it's faulty. He said, eh. Ah, ah. He said, what do you do? He told him his business. 
He said, okay, next week, call me. I'll get you a new phone. Just because where somebody was just saying, let's. So when pastors say we should be dancing, sincerely, I'm not dancing because I'm watching you. But there's a deal. I've been trusting God for deals that make me turn. I've been having deals, though. But the deals I'm trusting God for now, you know the one that will just make you turn. You don't be turning because you can't understand. Oh yeah, my feet on the baba, my baba, oh If you're coming for the very first time, let's appreciate you. Put your hands together for Pastor and Pastor Love. Lift. I said, put your hands together. Let's celebrate, 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 celebrate. All right. For the next five minutes, we're going to leave here. If this is your first time coming to this house, can you wave your hand? Let's just celebrate. If this is your first time coming to the house, first timers, first time. Are there people here like that? Are there first timers in the house? Okay, I see that gentleman over there. Oh, there's that lovely lady there. Wave it. Okay, can you stand up? Oh, there's that. Ah, can you stand up? Let's celebrate them. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Church, if you know you did not invite anybody, can you stand up and celebrate them? Come on, help us. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, now who, who is taking them? Okay. All right, you see, there's a gentleman waving his hand. Ushers, can we help them to usher these lovely people? All right, there's just a short reception. Put your hands together for them. Can we? Ushers, ushers, can we help them? We need ushers in this church. Ushers, can we help them? Just put your hands together for them. Yeah, you can join them. Just, just a short reception. Just a short one. Just a short one. Wow, is there a rapture? Where are all the, where are all the ushers? All of a sudden, I'm just looking for the horses everywhere. Where are the horses? Where me more? Where? <laughs> Sometimes, anytime I see my wife, I know rapture is not taking place. <laughs> That's what gives me confidence. <laughs> and if I see her, I say, okay, we're still here. <laughs> Praise God. All right. So, so this, this in the next three weeks is very powerful. 
Next Sunday, we're having a communion service. Now, somebody shared a testimony with us in the last communion service. We're going to share later about the prayer we prayed. The, the prayer we submitted and something powerful happened. We're going to be sharing it later. Some of these things are real. We've been trusting God for power, miracles, and signs. So you can be praying and not be seen. Okay? So we've been trusting God for that. So for next one, we're praying for loved ones. Okay? We're praying for loved ones that are not saved. Family members, um, your, your, your aunt, your, your dad. We're praying for them. So please watch out. We're going to be sending a link. People will just submit their name. Just give us the name. That's all. So you put your own name and your number so that we can reach you. So we're going to be praying for them next week Sunday. So as we break communion, we're praying for their salvation. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? So we're going to, we're going to bind the prince of the power of hair over their, of their life. And we're going to pull them and snatch them into the kingdom. Okay? So a lot of people that have been avoiding salvation, we're going to snatch them. On Sunday, we're just going to pick them and say, come, take them out of hell and pull them in. All right, that's number one. Number two, um, we're starting a prayer tomorrow, five weeks prayer and fasting called Press. Everybody say Press. Okay, so it's an house of freedom um, delivery that we're going on with. So we're going to be fasting on Monday, on Wednesday, then on Friday we all pray together online. On Monday, we're not praying together. You're praying by yourself. We send you a guideline. On Wednesday, same thing. But on Friday, we all pray what? Together, online. So if you're not on the platform, a lot of people are missing things. If you're not on the platform, please, Robert, raise up your hand. Reach this wonderful gentleman that is going to be getting married very soon by his grace. All right? <laughs> I've announced it publicly now. So, so there's what you can do again. So, so <laughs> praise God. All right, so please make sure, make sure you drop your name, your number, or something. Let's just have it so that we can register you in. The third thing is that we're having, um, whew, this one is beautiful. Even though I may be traveling, I'll try and come back that same day. God help me. Um, the friends and family and neighbor service is going to happen on the last Sunday of this month. It's going to be the first one. Now listen, prepare. You're going to invite, it's going to be a full house. So we're going to have a short service for the second service. Then we're going to, outside there, we're going to set up different things. We're going to set up board games, uh, table tennis, um, different things. Then we set up food, fun. We're going to have a, lo a large bonding activity. So tell somebody you can't miss that service. Don't miss that service. Miss that. No, tell somebody you may have to do double service. Come for first one or go, you come back and join us. Are you getting me? A DJ will be here. It's going to be a fantastic time. So we're going to relax. Don't rush out. We're going to, it's going to be a real family integration. All right? And we're inviting a lot of community. Invite friends. Invite, so I'm only just telling you ahead what's going to happen on the last Sunday of the month. God has been so beautiful. Lift up your hand and let's bless him even as we go. Is there any other thing? Did I miss anything? Or are we good? All right. Leaders, you're going to get some announcement. We're meeting here next Saturday, so you'll get that information later. Let's lift up our hands and bless them. It's been a wonderful service. Let's pray for Pastor and Pastor Lovett that the Lord will bless them, the Lord will increase them, the Lord will anoint them afresh. They will grow from strength to strength in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. We thank you for a new season that had been set up and we begin to run into it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless you. We honor you. You're so beautiful. You're so great. Give him thanks for this new week you are entering now. Good news from a far country will come. You will get a call. You will get a call. I'm telling you. Somebody called me yesterday. He said, I'm sorry I'm calling you over the weekend. <laughs> and I, I didn't know he was a person. I said, oh, no problem, no problem. You can speak to me. You will get a call. You, you, you will get that call. Uh, that will hear the word of the Lord. There will be a move. You have to move. You have to change that position. You will, can't be there again. You will get a call. I'm telling you, I just know in my spirit, somebody here, you will get that call. Yes, you may have been hanging around people, but now people are going to hang around you because you will get a call. You've been staying around people, but people want to stay around you because you will get that call. Whenever you have been forgotten, you'll be remembered. Ah, come on, I'm seeing depth. Oh, anybody owing you, come on, join my faith with your faith. People that are owing you, payment will be made this week 
in the name of Jesus. Delayed salary, delayed allowances. Oh, come on. Delayed proposal. Oh, come on. Lord, I pray you will get that call. Whether you are in the back or in the front, you will get that call in the name of Jesus. You will go back and apply and they will interview you for true in the name of Jesus. I say you go and apply and they will interview you for true in Jesus' name. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Next week, I'm going to, before we share goodness, next week, I'm going to be praying with the entrepreneurs. Anyone that's an entrepreneur in the house, we're going to be having a prayer together next week. So get ready, we'll take the data by next week Sunday. All entrepreneurs, we're trusting God that the least among us here shall be like David. We're just trusting God for that. So, so you won't need to be begging again. You will help others, all right? Because God will open your eyes to know that your blessing is not for you, they're for other people. Now you can stand up as we share goodness. Now look at the person you would like to bless tonight, this morning. Look at somebody you feel like blessing with goodness this morning. Find somebody you feel like, let me bless you. I said, look at that person and say, let me bless you. I want to bless you. No, look at the person very well and say, I want to bless you. Tell the person, my words are powerful. I need to bless you. Look at the person and say, my words are powerful. I need to bless you. Now tell the person, say, surely, goodness and mercy. Man of God, I don't know who you are blessing. No, don't say man of God. I don't know who you are blessing. Find somebody. You need to bless somebody. You need to bless somebody. You can be three. You can be four. Tell the person one more time. Say, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you shall dwell. Tell the person you shall dwell. No, let the person know one more time. Say, you shall dwell in the house of the Lord. And the blessing of the field and the blessing of the city shall follow you. Sound health shall follow you. Sound knowledge shall follow you. Waters of oil shall follow you. Deep truths shall follow you. The blessing of Abraham shall rest upon you. You shall be remembered. You shall recover and recover all. Tell the person you shall recover all. Tell the person you shall recover all. May the Lord bless you. See you next Sunday. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you.